Hey everyone, welcome to Popular Cruising. I'm your host, Jason Leppert, coming to you today with not a review of a ship, but a preview of an upcoming new vessel. Carnival Cruise Line's Mardi Gras will be named after its first 1972 ship, but will in fact be its largest ever. It has been delayed a couple of times, but is now slated for February of 2021. The ship, along with its first ever roller coaster at sea, is currently under construction at the Meyer Turku shipyard in Finland. And as you can see, the superstructure is pretty much entirely complete, just awaiting final outfitting. And very quickly, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. And if you would consider becoming one of our most valued supporters, please head on over to our Patreon account. We're excited with this video to introduce a new format, showcasing deck by deck, venues, and accommodations to look forward to. Like here on Deck 4, where the Family Harbor Lounge will be appropriately next to the Camp Ocean Kids facility, which in turn will be nestled between Family Harbor Ocean View, Family Harbor Ocean View Suite, and Family Harbor Interior Staterooms. The Family Harbor Lounge itself is rendered to look a lot like it is on Carnival's other latest ships. And here we can see that Family Harbor interior staterooms will feature a bit more of a square footprint, while Family Harbor Ocean View ones will be more rectangular. Which in three dimensions also look very similar to previous iterations, but new are these cool circular design elements like the mirror on the wall and the light fixture on the ceiling. Meanwhile, Family Harbor Ocean View suites will be even larger. When you're ready to book your cruise, we recommend doing so through our sponsor, Fairy Godmother Vacations will take care of all your trip planning absolutely for free, adding even more complimentary value to your already exciting voyage. To get your free quote, click on the link here or in the description box, or contact them traditionally using the information below. Then going up to Deck 5 and following the trend of spa facilities being relocated to lower decks, the Cloud9 Spa, along with its treatment rooms, thermal suites, and thalassotherapy pool, as well as the salon, will be positioned here, along with its accompanying Cloud9 Spa Ocean View, and Cloud9 Spa Cove balcony cabins. And heading back to the stern, the chef's table will no doubt be placed within the galley of the main dining rooms. Delving a bit further into the renderings, you can see here the Cloud9 Spa reception area, and its great undulating natural wood, one of the soothing treatment rooms, as well as the thermal suite, with a much larger thalassotherapy pool this time around. Like the Family Harbor staterooms, the Cloud9 Spa interior is available as a square footprint, as well as a premium elongated variety, and in three dimensions, you can see the new natural wood tones carried over, as well as a soothing color palette and soft lighting. Or you can choose to upgrade to a Cloud9 Spa Ocean View, which naturally includes vistas to the outside. Or alternatively, you might consider the Cloud9 Spa Cove balconies, which are those featuring a nice sheltered veranda. But it's on deck six that you really start to see the changes in the layout from previous ships. Of course, the Mardi Gras Theater is still nestled within the bow, and now the Punchliner Comedy Club has its very own venue, and the familiar Piano Bar 88, as well as Java Blue Cafe and Cherry on top, mark the perimeter of one of the ship's new fun zones called Grand Central. The Mardi Gras Theater is certainly a departure from previous Carnival show lounges, much improving upon the preceding Liquid Lounge's poor sight lines, but perhaps losing too much aesthetic personality. Still, we're sure the productions themselves will be excellent, including the anticipated new Family Feud Live and the Punchliner Comedy Club will now be its own handsome space. This is one we really can't wait for because the stand-up comedians here are always hilarious. Meanwhile, Piano Bar 88 is staying true to its usual style, including its usual black and white key counters. And then the Java Blue Cafe begins to showcase the ship's newly refined look, while Cherry on Top is still appropriately colorful as ever. Also on Deck 6, Grand Central really comes into its own with a massive Ocean View Atrium, before opening up to the French Quarter Fun Zone including Emerald's Bistro 1396, and the interactive Carnival Kitchen concept first introduced on the Carnival Panorama. Plus the Flamingo and Palm restaurants, which appear to be the main dining rooms on board. Instead of Carnival's usual symmetrical atriums, Grand Central's is off to the side with a stage and plenty of seating that converts nicely from day into night. And bringing back a bit more of Carnival's signature theming, tastefully without Joe Farkas's input, is the French Quarter's Fortune Teller Bar as well as the stylish Brass Magnolia, including its vaulted two-story bar. Still, this neighborhood's hallmark will be celebrity chef Emma Lagasse's aforementioned restaurant. And perfect for learning how to cook and enjoying one's own creations will be Carnival Kitchen. For the main dining rooms, the Flamingo restaurant is thankfully anything but gaudy, like in the past. But comparatively, it might be a little too simple. We'll definitely reserve judgment though for the final product. Regaining much more style, however, is the Palm Restaurant, with awesome backlit architecture. Then heading up to Deck 7 behind the Mardi Gras Theater is the Mardi Gras Casino, 
which will wrap around the Grand Central Atrium, hopefully without any secondhand cigarette fumes. And separated this time around from the Punchliner Comedy Club is the Limelight Lounge. On the other side is one of Carnival's other signatures, the Alchemy Bar. And behind it is the Fahrenheit 555 Steakhouse. Strangely though, the two appear to be separated by a bulkhead, limiting passage without first going upstairs or downstairs. On the flip side of the atrium, the Mardi Gras Casino definitely has its own great ocean views, as well as its own bar, which as we said before hopefully limits its smoking. As now its own entity, the Limelight Lounge will likely be a multi-purpose venue, no longer featuring comedy, but perhaps trivia and karaoke. Along a two-story esplanade will be a stair entrance to the Alchemy Bar, where like on the Vista class, conical pillars are present, but this time without being wrapped by LED screens, making, as at the Steakhouse, an overall more refined aesthetic. But this venue's isolation from the Alchemy Bar is a bit unfortunate. Thankfully, things begin to open up again on Deck 8, starting with Havana Extended Cabana Cabins at the front, along with other Havana accommodations, all of which have exclusive access to the Havana Bar and Pole opposite of which is the very popular Gigi Asian Kitchen, which is now perfectly lined up with Bonsai Teppanyaki and Bonsai Sushi along Grand Central. Speaking of the Havana accommodations, they too are available as square footprint interiors or rectangular interiors, looking much as they did before, but with the new circular treatments. Of course, it's those great extended cabanas that offer more in the way of a veranda, naturally with more interior room to match. But as you would expect, it's the sweets that go all out. Especially this massive corner variety. And guests therein get private access to not only the Havana Bar, but also the Havana Pool. Gigi Asian Kitchen is also looking quite nice on the Mardi Gras. As is Bonsai Teppanyaki and Sushi. Both of which now have views to the outside. Farther back on Deck 8 is La Piazza Fun Zone, encompassing Cucina del Capitano and Pizzeria del Capitano, placing the latter for the first time along the Lanai instead of the Lido, and then entirely new is Rudy Seagrill, from Carnival Corporation favorite chef Rudy Sodomon, and at the far back is Summer Landing, with Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse and Brewhouse, plus the Summer Landing Pool where the Havana Pool has been in the past, the Watering Hole Bar, and the Great New Heroes Tribute Lounge. Cucina del Capitano looks much as it has before, but this time with great alfresco access to the lanai. Similarly, the very popular 24-7 pizzeria has a much larger dedicated space, and Rudy Seagrill playfully features the chef's signature food faces, as well as its own spectacular views. Also far larger on the Mardi Gras is Guy's Pig and Anchor Smokehouse and Brewhouse, encompassing house beers brewed right on board, live entertainment, and one of two complimentary swirls on the ship all behind which is the refreshing summer landing pool, seen by day and by night, complete with two whirlpools off to the side. Skipping to the upper public levels on deck 16, there are several of the ship's many balcony staterooms to go around, then naturally a poolside blue iguana cantina, relocated seafood shack along with new street eats, and the central beach pool, all part of the Lido Fun Zone. Balcony decor and appointments are a bit more of what you can expect across the majority of Mardi Gras accommodations, including storage ottomans, multiple USB ports, shaving bars in the shower, and a sofa that quickly transforms into a comfortable bed. Otherwise, the Blue Iguana Cantina will be quite familiar to fans, as will the premium seafood shack, along with new free street eats, all servicing the beach pool area, including dive-in movies. Also on deck 16 along the Lido, the Red Frog Rum Bar has become the double-decker Red Frog Tiki Bar. There's also the namesake Lido Marketplace, Big Chicken from Shack, and the Tides Pool at the Stern. I'd say the two levels of the Tiki Bar look pretty cool. And the Lido Marketplace continues its resort-like aesthetic. Among the new stuff, we're definitely looking forward to Big Chicken from Shaquille O'Neal. And also the Great Tides Pool and Whirlpools all the way at the back of the ship. 
then up on Deck 17 are even more accommodation varieties, not the least of which are Cloud9 Spa Extended Balconies, Carnival Excel Presidential Suites, and Cloud9 Spa Suites. And it's on this level that you'll find Guy's Burger Joint, along with the Tweens and Teens Clubs. Here's an overview look at the Cloud9 Spa Extended Balcony, as well as the even larger Cloud9 Spa Suite which is certainly ample in size. But even bigger are the brand new Carnival Excel Suites, which feature unique layouts and a touch of mid-century modern decor. The Carnival Excel Corner Suite features a living room and a bedroom, as seen right here. And the Carnival Excel Aft Suite ups the ante with a private whirlpool. And again, a separate living room and bedroom. With, of course, that stellar balcony. But even more incredible is the Carnival Excel Presidential Suite. With a similar configuration on the inside. And an even larger balcony that stretches out over the bridge wing and still showcases its own private whirlpool. And if that's enough to make you hungry, just head on over to Guy's Burger Joint for those amazingly complimentary gourmet burgers. Up another deck on 18 is where you'll find the Serenity Adults Only Area, as well as the Ultimate Playground Fun Zone, complete with ropes course and sports court, Carnival Waterworks, and mini golf. The Serenity Deck will be a spacious quiet zone, with ropes as usual, but more rarely with its own pool. And then naturally noisier but isolated to the back will be the ropes course and sports court, including zip runs this time around. And this Carnival Waterworks will feature a forward-facing mat slide, as well as a standard twister and freefall variety. And mini golf rounds out the traditional offerings before we get to that roller coaster. Lastly, on deck 19 is the new Loft 19. And certainly not least is Bolt, the ultimate sea coaster. Loft 19 overlooks the complimentary Serenity deck with an infinity style pool and private reservable cabanas and its own bar and lunch delivery. In fact, the Excel suites get unlimited access here. And to finish off, here's Bolt. I've been saying for years that it's only a matter of time before a cruise line attempts a full blown roller coaster at sea, and it's Carnival that's proving my prediction. Let's just say I cannot wait to get on this thing. And we don't have much longer to wait as the clock counts down to February 2021. Thanks so much for watching. If you would, please like this video with a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel while hitting that bell icon to be notified of new videos. Watch our other ones and visit popularcruising.com.